Hello, this is the Provoked Brawn, and this is the NZXT Kraken Z73 RGB in white. And this comes with an LCD screen that lets you show off GIFs and a number of other things. And you can see it here with the Doom guy on it. Now, I have unboxed and reviewed the original Kraken Z73, the black version. And this is a newer model, which not only is now available in white, which looks fantastic, by the way, but also comes with RGB fans. So it comes with NZXT's RGB fans, the AER RGB2 fans, 320 millimeter fans, and the connections in order to set them up. So the setup and installation is ever so slightly different. And I'm going to show you what's included in the box and how it works. You'll also note that the packaging might suggest this is a black cooler, but there is actually a little label on it, which shows that it is the white variant. Now this is a 360mm cooler, which will work with a number of different Intel and AMD setups. And I'll leave all the specs in the description so you can find out more about the performance of it and also the socket setup. But one point of note is that the manual suggests it will work with a new LGA 1700, the Intel 12th gen CPUs, which is a slightly different socket setup. However, I didn't actually have the right brackets included in the box, so I'm trying to work out with NZXT what the deal is there, so it's worth noting. But a lot of the modern manufacturers are supplying extra bracket systems to work with older coolers on the newer motherboard setup, so it's worth bearing that in mind if you're considering this. And for reference, I'm installing this in the NZXT H710i, which I'll be doing a separate video on. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set it up what's included in a box, the features and facets of it, and the installation process, as well as going into some detail with benchmarks at the end of the video, and showing you some of what is possible with the LCD display, because obviously that's one of the most appealing things about this AIO, is the reason I purchased the previous one. And simple things like having it display the temperatures of your CPU and GPU at the same time is one of the main appeals for me. Now this thing comes with RGB fans, which is something that the original model did not. So that's a nice upgrade to this system. And a simple setup. NZXT fans, the RGB variants of them, are fairly straightforward to install. They come with a daisy chaining logic to them, which I'm going to show you as we go through this video. Essentially, you put a cable between each of the fans and then you finalize the loop by connecting it up and I'll show you how that works. But this means there's a lot less cables than something like the Corsair fan system where there's usually two f cables per fan and it becomes very complicated and you need an extra control box and all these other things. This is an all-in-one system and so everything you need is included in the box as standard and you can just get going with it and that's superb. And it's also, as you can see, magnificent with some really nice contrasting black and white aspects and elements in it. Now, this is a 360mm rad I'm going to be installing on top of the case that I'm using and exhausting through it. So I'm going to show you the process for doing that, assuming that you want to do something similar. So cool air is going to be pulled in through the front and exhausting through the rad and out the top of the case. This cooler has pre-applied thermal paste that I'm going to be using in this build, so you don't need to worry about applying any thermal paste. It's right there on there. You could, of course, clean it off and use something fancier if you wanted to, and I'm not going to for the purposes of this because I want to show what the benchmarks are for that. The display itself is also fixed, but you can adjust it within the software at 90 degrees and 180 degrees so you can change the positioning of it so you can actually install this in a few different ways depending on the setup of your case the positioning of your ram and other things and i'll show you more about that a bit later on it comes pre-installed with the intel bracket but you also do have instructions in the box which show you in great detail how to carry out the installation changes for amd and for the Intel installation. So the instructions are really clear, but what I want to do is give you a demonstration of what the setup process is like, and also just talk about the highlights of it. The radiator is a wonderful setup, and nicely threaded with the holes for the fan installation as well. So the setup here with this 73 is exactly what I had before with the previous one, in that it is gloriously easy to do. 
things are a little bit more complicated now thanks to these RGB fans because they do require a bit more thought and a bit more logic in terms of the setup process. But don't worry because I'm going to show you how to do it and the logic for that. So the installation here, as I said, we're looking to exhaust through the fan. So we're going to hook the fans with the fan facing towards you, which would be pointing down into your case, which is then pulling the air over it. So I'm going to show you the process for doing that. Included in the box, you have a number of different cables, which might look intimidating at first, but they aren't. Don't worry, we'll get there. As I said, you have the daisy chaining cables, which basically allow you to connect up the cables, looping them together, going from one fan to the next to the next, and then connecting them up as well. You have a USB-C connection that plugs into the pump head, and I'll show you that as well. It plugs one end into the pump head and the other end into your motherboard on the bottom usually, and it's a straightforward setup. And then you have another cable, which has a mass of cables on it, it includes SATA power, the power for your fan connections, so a breakout cable for that, and some other things. Again, straightforward setup, and I will show you that, so stick with me if you want to know how to do it. You also have the back plate for Intel's setup, so I'm going to be doing that here. I am using a 1200 socket CPU here, and with an 11th gen motherboard and a 10th gen processor just to complicate things, but you can also use AMD's AM4, TR4, STRX4, and you also have the setup for that. You have long screws to screw the fans to the radiator and then small screws to connect it to the case as well. So fairly straightforward setup here and easy installation and a really smooth process for installing the fans. The fans themselves are also very nice. They give off some nice RGB lighting, as I will show you later on. And you can get a good amount of speed out of them. They go up to 1,500 RPM. They have a max airflow of 52.44 CFM. And a reasonably quiet, giving off a maximum of 33 decibels. They are fluid bearing fans, so they're not too shabby. They're guaranteed up to 60,000 hours for six years as well, so should be a pretty solid setup here in terms of that. Now here's the cable that I was talking about. This is a scary looking cable if you don't know what you're doing, but once you get an idea, it's fairly straightforward. One end essentially connects to the pump head. The other then has a multitude of connections on it. You'll see that there is one where there's basically three little cables coming out of that. That is the power connection. So each of these fans has a power connection coming out of it. You are then connecting these up to this, and that's really straightforward. So once it's all connected, you connect the fans up to this section with these three connectors here. That essentially allows the pump head and the system there to then control the fan speed over the rad. So you're going to plug the motherboard, you're going to have a connection to your USB and to the CPU or AIO pump header on your motherboard and then you'll have control of the fan speed that way and you can see basically the result is what you're going to end up with here which is those three connections are connected there and the other end of it gets connected to the pump head you also have a connection for the RGB so you'll see this cable with the NZXT bit on it that's for the RGB lighting so the final part of the loop system goes into that you then have this this one which is one connects to the motherboard and the other one connects to the pump head and then finally the SATA power. Don't worry, I'm going to go into more depth and show you each individual step as we go through them. So the largish one here, sort of flat multi-pin connection goes in the pump head here. And I'd recommend installing these cables before you see everything into the motherboard, at least into the pump head, because what you might find as I did, and I'll show you later on, is that it becomes quite fiddly to get those cables in once you've installed the pump. And this is obviously going to depend on the size of your hands and the build space that you have within the case, but it's worth doing. Also, because micro USB is a little bit fiddly to plug in, that's worth getting that sorted out before you start. The next stage of the process is to work out how your rad's going to sit. You obviously have a number of different options. As I said, I'm going to mount mine on the top. As long as the pump head isn't the highest point in your system, then you're fine with however you mount it. You won't cause any problems. What I'm going to do here is basically work out which way round I want it. I have the option for having the tubes, for example, on the left hand side near the back of the case, or you can put them on the right. I figure that it's going to look the best this way around. So I've then sussed it out 
got an idea of what the direction of it's going to be and now I'm going to mount the fans and the way to do this is to make sure that you've mounted them in a direction so that the cables are facing the back of the case so that when you've mounted it to the top of the case those cables are facing the rear and so you don't have any mess and so this is the installation process for that you need the long screws and the washers that are included in the package and we're basically just screwing the fans down into the radiator and this is going to suck warm air out of your case over the rad and out of the top this is a semi-optimum way of doing it and uh, there is much debate as whether this is the best way but this is the way i generally do it and it is a decent setup and i will show you the performance of it a bit later on but you will need to bear in mind the impact that the case will have on it because it really will depend on what case you're using and what cpu you're using and your ambient temperatures of your room so it's things like that to bear in mind too but more on that a bit later on you'll see that the installation process for screwing the screws in is really straightforward it's nicely threaded so it's dead easy to screw them down and i've just skipped over the process for it but it's four screws per fan and then once you've done that is then all connected up so they are in place and ready to do their job the next stage is to get the tiny little cable that has in and out on it and find the right spots on the fans themselves so there is a little spot on there and you'll see it marked in and out you can't actually get these wrong because of the way the fans are placed and also the length of the cable and the markings on them and the shape of the connections but essentially you're just making sure that you have in and out connections between each of them so you can see they're clearly labeled on the fan as well as on the cable so it's really straightforward in order to do this and it's basically just daisy chaining these up this makes life a lot easier and a lot less complicated than other systems that require two cables per fan to then go to a control box or some other external system the next process is to then remove the fan tray as you will usually have on most cases and as i said this is nzxt's h710i which i'm going to be doing a video on separately so if you're interested be sure to subscribe and come back for that so this tray is held in place with thumb screws and what we need to do is just take it off to then mount the radiator to it and then you can put the whole thing back in and then use the thumb screws to screw it back down one thing of note a mistake that i made in this is that i put the radiator on the fan tray the wrong way around and i didn't realize until after i started to the installation process and I actually messed it up and then failed. So what you want to do if you're using the same case as me is make sure that the fan tray is actually seated the right way around so it will be facing in the right direction. So here I've actually got the front to the back of the radiator, if that makes sense. But I'll show you the change for that in a minute. But for most of the standard setups of this, basically what we're using is the little screws and the tiny washers to then connect the radiator to the fan mounting bracket on your case. Not all cases necessarily have a removable fan tray. You might be mounting the rad directly to the case, but in this case, you can take that fan bracket out and it makes it a lot easier to set up. Just put it in a position where you can get it flat and you're not squashing the pump tubes or anything else like that and then go about the installation process for screwing those screws in. Again, this is nicely threaded and it's really easy to do. You will also find the instructions in the box included with a nice detailed manual and pictures. So if you're having trouble following me, you might find that you have other options in there. Or should I talk to you about other setups for it because there are other ways to mount it. You might find, for example, you might like to mount the fans on the other side rather than the way I've done it, but this is uh, optimum for the setup that I'm using. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the tubes towards the front of the case, and this is what the sort of final setup is going to be once I've installed the motherboard. So I'm just testing it out and making sure it's going to be right. As I said, the tray is actually in the wrong place here, so this isn't the final look, but you'll see what I mean with that in a minute. So the idea is that I'll mount it so that the pump head is sitting something like this, and that gives me an idea of sort of the flexibility of the cables and where i'm going to put them as well so i actually made a bit of a change to this which i'll show you in a second because of the cable tidying system and the way that's there at the back of the case you can then run those fan cables out and as i showed they have three power connections in them that just basically need to be connected to the pump head which i'll show you in a minute but making sure that your fans are mounted in the right direction means that those cables run to the back and it's a nice smooth process for the rest of the installation, I'm just going about installing and setting up the motherboard, obviously installing a RAM CPU and everything else. 
You might already have all this done and you're just upgrading your system, or you might be building a new one. This is a 11th gen Intel CPU setup with a motherboard, and I'm using a 10th gen CPU because I'm a madman and I'm trying to save some money. So this is a 10900K, a Core i9 from Intel, which I purchased previously, and I'm using the newer generation of motherboard. I'm actually building this case for a friend with the idea that maybe in the future they might want to upgrade to the 11th gen Intel CPU in order to get PCIe Gen 4 in case you're curious. But the 10th gen Core i9 does run at quite warm temperatures, so it's worth using an all-in-one cooler to make sure you're getting the best experience out. This is a nice case as well. It's a nice, easy case to build in. Obviously, I'll go into more depth in the review and the setup of that and how it works and the quirks of it and the things I like about it. But you can see the end result is quite a nice setup. Now, at the back... Once you have a motherboard installed, you need to use this bracket. This is the Intel bracket. You basically need to push those little connectors in for this setup if you're using the same as me. It has a different sort of adjustment for different Intel boards. So if you have a different socket, you might push those connectors out to the furthest point. But for the 1200 socket, we're pushing them all the way in and you then screw in the standoffs. So in this case, the standoffs with the same length on either side are being screwed into the four corners of that bracket that's mounted on the rear. The process for this is obviously different with the AMD, but as I said, the instructions will hopefully cover that, and I can't cover it all because unfortunately I just don't have an AMD CPU and motherboard setup to be able to show you that. But the process for Intel is remarkably straightforward and simple. One of the considerations is how you're going to mount the pump head, though, what you'll see in a minute is there might be some interference with the RAM. Now you get to see my mistake, and I could have edited this out and made me look intelligent, but I actually thought it was worth demonstrating the problems that you might come across. This is more a commentary on the case and my brain rather than the AIO, but I think it's worth seeing that you need to make sure you mount the bracket the right way around to ensure it sits properly, because otherwise you will have a problem with it and it won't seat properly, and that could be an issue. So make sure you've got that set up properly. So now it's set in place, and it's mounted down. Now I'm going to go to the process of installing the pump head. So there are a number of options that you can do. As I said, because it has a display on it, you can adjust it within the cam software, so you can turn it and reposition it. I'm going to go with the setup in which with it here with the pump tubes on the right. It does squash up quite tight against the RAM, but based on my knowledge of what I've done with the Z73 in my case, in previous build, it is possible to do. It's just very tight. Alternatively, you could do it with the tubes down, so you can see it like in this direction, and you can then adjust the view within the software so it won't be a problem. You can just have the tubes facing that way instead. And that's an alternative, although you do need to take into account the fact that the cables for the breakout cables come out of the top of the pump, so you still will have a little bit of a fiddle there, which is why I recommend installing those cables before you go about seating the pump like this. So make sure you put those cables in before. Don't do what I've just done, because then you end up having to fiddle and faff trying to get it in. Gently tease the pump head onto those standoff screws and hold it in place while you screw on the thumb screws. This connection is a little bit fiddly and because it's pressing up against the RAM sticks, it's quite tight. So you need to make sure you've got a little bit of pressure there. So you don't apply too much pressure. You don't want to break the CPU or the pins on the motherboard or, or damage anything else. I'm basically making sure we've got everything seated well and it's screwed down nicely, not over tightening, but just getting it just right. Pre-applied thermal paste means this process is fairly straightforward because you don't need to worry about applying your own thermal paste. But if you do make any mistakes or if you do find that your CPU is running a bit hot, you could just unscrew this system, obviously with the machine turned off, and clean off the thermal paste off both the CPU and the pump head and apply some fancier thermal paste, something like Thermal Grizzlies from Cryonaut, so we have particularly good set up there they've got some really nice pads and different applications that might make a difference but for standards pre-applied paste works pretty well 
Now is the time to install those cables. You will see now the fiddle and faff I had with it and why I'd recommend doing it beforehand. Essentially, we've got to install this single one in the top and then the micro USB, and then I've got to run everything to the back. The micro USB connection goes to the bottom of the motherboard, to the USB header. And again, this plugs in and it's a bit fiddly and then you have to run the cables. One of the downsides of this setup, as you'll see, is there's a lot of cables coming out the top. You then have to cable manage and try and make tidy and neat, which is quite difficult. I ended up using some ties in order to do that, to tidy those cables up a little bit, but it is a little bit tricky. It's not terribly easy, unfortunately. Not the best looking mess of cables, but they are really convenient and easy to connect because essentially what you've got here is everything that you need. You have the SATA power for the power connection. You have an RGB connection so that you can daisy chain up the RGB from there. And you also have obviously the power for the fan connections. So you have everything you need all connected into the pump head. And then the pump head's connected by USB connection to the motherboard. And also a small connection, which I'll show you in a second, which basically connects to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And that means that the pump and your motherboard can talk to each other and control everything, make sure your CPU runs as it should. So we're now going around to the back of the case. We're taking the cables from each of the fans and we're connecting them to this breakout cable, which is the three connections for the power. Really simple and straightforward. One of the easiest installations and really fuss free. You do then obviously have to go about the process of cable tidying and making things a bit neater, which is a bit more of a faff. The SATA power connection comes from your power supply unit. And this is a flat connection that you'll see here. And you'll probably find there are other power supply connections like this that you need to connect. Front panel, for example, might have some power connections like that. You'll also find it with SSDs and hard drives. So you'll run a cable from your power supply to do that. And then the setup's all done. So just remember, make sure that you plug that little connection in for the CPU fan header as well on the motherboard, which is usually in the top left. Now we've done that and it's turned on and it's working. We can obviously peel off the cover and then you get to use that and test it out. And you can see the RGB lighting lit up on the top here and also a demonstration of my favorite setting for this pump head and for the Z73 in general, which is to have the CPU and GPU temperatures on display. This is the dual infographic setting. If you watched my previous video, you'll have seen you go into the NZXT cam software and show off what you can do here. But this is one of my favorite settings, although it's really nice to have the GIFs and that. I'll show you that. But the other thing here that you have is you obviously have the RGB lighting and there's a variety of RGB settings within the software where you can tweak the lighting effects. Obviously, some of the lighting that you're seeing here, the LED strip, for example, is included with the NZXT case. And so the effects are sort of interesting and overpowering, perhaps, from that. But you can see you have a nice ring around the fans on the cooler. And if you have NZXT fans with RGB, you can connect up the full system that way and use the control box that's included with them to get the best view. Now, one of the things I noticed was it was running quite warm. So I was playing games and I found that we're playing the same game on two different machines and getting about 60 degrees uh, on one machine and about 50 degrees on the other. Now, this isn't a commentary on the PC or on the cooler, but instead on the case setup, which is what I was saying, because this case is actually throttling the thermals a little bit, perhaps. And it's not a fair comparison because there's a lot more fans in my normal case. But I ran a Cinebench test and some other benchmarks to see what the performance was like. And I was getting around 80 degrees centigrade, somewhere between 70 and 80, max out usually about 80 degrees centigrade on the CPU during these benchmarks. Quite intensive testing with the CPU running at maximum speed and at 100% load, so it does get very warm. Now you can see some of what you can do with the pump head. So you have the ability to add in GIFs of any sort, so you can basically add in whatever you want. And there's a variety of different options. Obviously, you can just go to giphy.com and download your favorite GIFs, and you can put it in there and position it easily and have those run nicely. And the result's pretty nice looking. 
And this is one of my favorite setups because you have a variety of different options in terms of what you can do. You can customize and show off a number of things, whether it's the load that's on the CPU, your load that's on your GPU, the temperatures of the cores, the temperatures of the liquid, the current performance of your CPU, and you can change the colors and effects of them as well. So there's loads of different settings. Because of the RGB lighting on the fans as well, you can change it so that the fans represent different things in terms of the temperatures. So there's loads of different options in here. It has a bit more flexibility than the original Kraken Z73 did because you can customize according to the fan lighting as well. So there's a lot of options there. But generally speaking, the performance is quite similar in what it delivers and the overall results so this is a very nice setup as you can see a 360 mil cooler with a really easy installation process and great settings it is worth bearing in mind that results you get will vary depending on the case you're using i get a much better performance out of my lee and lee dynamic xl in terms of the cooling because that's a lot more fans but this thing will work at keeping even the hot cpus running well this has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.